All right, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, Dash the and Fun L. <laughs> Back at it with another Throwback Tunes on another Thursday, and I am reviewing an album that I thought I would never listen to, and that is a Chamillionaire album. And this one is his debut album, The Sound of Revenge, which actually is a pretty cool title, I will admit. So this joint came out November 22nd, 2005 it was recorded from 2004 up to 2005 and it was done under chum military records okay that's new to me and universal records as well so the producers involved were chen millionaire himself who was the executive producer obviously the beat bullies scott storch hardly davidson play and skills cool and dre happy perez many fresh so messiah twins with a z AJ Scratch, Sean Blaze, Chops, all caps, and The Riffs. And I believe that's all the producers. They didn't forget anybody. No, that's all of them. So, there you go with that. Now, let's take a look at how this album did in the charts and stuff like that. The album was 68th in the French album charts, 100 in the German album charts, 34th in the Irish album charts, 11th in the New Zealand album charts, 67th on the Scottish album charts, 22nd in the UK album charts, number 10 on the US Billboard 200, number 2 in both US Top RB slash hip hop album charts and the US top, uh, top Rap Albums charts. By the end of the year 2006, it was 34th on the US Billboard 200 and number 12 on the US Top RB slash hip hop album charts. And it was gold in the UK with 100,000 copies sold and platinum here in the US with a million copies sold. So, there you go with that i did not forget anything else so and actually it's not your military records it's actually your military entertainment so that's the uh name of the company there all right so with that out the way let's get on with the track so we got the standard edition and we got the deluxe edition bonus disc so if you got the deluxe edition obviously there's a bonus disc that came with three uh five additional tracks i'm only going to reveal the standard so y'all know how I roll. There's 16 tracks, and even though there is a track, there are two tracks rather with the words intro and outro in it. Both of them are actual songs, which means I can actually give you guys a top five, not a top three. So with that said, let's go. The first track is called The Sound of Revenge, and then in parentheses, intro. Next up is actually, yeah, the next track is In the Trunk, followed by one of the three singles off this album which and this one's called turning up this is actually the first single off this album featuring little flip turning up featuring little flip next up is yeah this song right here this is the song that put in my opinion put your millionaire on the map it's still being used to this day by the way Mo mostly just the hook but y'all get the point and that is riding no g with that possibly featuring crazy bone y'all see me rolling yeah that song yep that's the song Track number five is called No Snitch, uh, No Snitching, excuse me, No G, but with the apostrophe. Featuring Bum B, followed by Southern and Takeover, featuring Killer Mike and Pastor Troy. Track number seven is called Radio Interruption, followed by Fronten, No G, but with the apostrophe. And no, this ain't the frail version. Track number nine is the third single off this album, Grown and Sexy, obviously riding the second single. Track number 10 is called Think I'm Crazy, and featuring Natalie, followed by Rain, featuring Billy Cook and Scarface. Track number 12 is called Picture Perfect featuring Bum B again. Track number 13 is called Fly As The Sky featuring Lil Rain and Rasak, R-A-S-A-Q, I think that's how you pronounce it. Track number 14 is Peppin Me featuring Tammy Latrell. Peppin as in, or Peepin rather, my bad, Peepin Me. P-E-E-P-I-N, no G but with the apostrophe. Track number 15 is called Void In My Life and then the last track is called Outro. Again, that is not a skit, that's an actual song. Now, for those of you who are interested, here are the tracks in the bonus disc if you got the deluxe edition. The first track is called Turning Up Remix, featuring Lil O, Hawk, which is abbreviated, and ESG, abbreviated, obviously. Track number two is called Grind Time, followed by Ryder, then Hate and Yeah Eyes, Yeah as in Right A, and then Bad Guy is the last track off the bonus disc. But again, we only go focus on the standard edition. So the first single off this album is called Turn It Up. This joint came out September 3rd, 2005. Again, this is the first single off the album. And there's a music video for this joint. And there's a remix. And we talked about it. It's in the bonus disc as well. And it's also featured on... 
is going down three a mixtape hosted by Chim millionaire which production by chops and on the sound of revenge bonus yeah i mentioned that part already and this single was 41st on the u.s billboard hot 100 31st in the u.s hot rb slash hip-hop songs charts number nine on the u.s hot rap songs charts and number eight on the u.s rhythmic charts as well now let's get on to the second single this is the one right here which is riding this joint is the second single of the album came out December 13, 2005, and it was recorded in 2005. So, and actually, I got some interesting news there. So, this single is apparently the final single of the album in the US. We'll get more of that later. Yes, there is a music video in this, uh, for this single as well. Now, here's, let's, let's go through the music video real quick. I do like this part. The music video shows cops abusing their powers Though Chan Millionaire does admit to various crimes of this being promoted, including DWI and prostitution. Here's, oh, this is a new word. Ju, uh, juxtaposes, just the post, J U X T A P O S S E S. I probably butchered that word, so I apologize in advance. So basically, he does that, police actions with wrestling scenes to show how the police allegedly treat suspects. The music video film in Houston, Texas. Featured cameo appearances from Tom Lister Jr., Wishbone, Lazy Bone, Playing Skills, Chingo Bling, OG 1C, Big Tuck, and Chuck Millionaire's younger brother, that name again, Rascat, Rassaz, Rassaz, R A S A Q. So, yeah, there's that. And let's see, the song is played after Houston Astros victories and has also become an internet meme. And Emmons Macros, again, this is why this song put him on the map, obviously. One of the reasons why, actually. Spunk rock band Zoloff, The Rock and Roll Destroyer, have covered the song live. Dirty, uh, Riding Dirty is the title of the 1996 album by UGK. Chan Millionaire often cites this as one of his all time favorite records. And yeah, there you go. Again, this joint, yeah. And let's see. More info on July 20, uh, 17, 2006, Chim Millionaire announced via bulletin on his official MySpace page, who remember that, that American parodist Real Al Yankovic, y'all remember him, recorded a parody of writing for his new album, Straight Out of Linwood, which was released on September 26, 2006. I might review that, I don't know. The parody called Right and Nerdy also featured a music video and was released as the lead single from the album. Chameleon stated in an interview that he enjoyed the parody of the song written by Weird Al and was surprised by his rapping ability. So that's interesting. So yeah, there's a bunch of remixes and parodies, some done by UGK and Pimp C, Pat Poos and Jamil, The Game and DJ Crick, Akron, or Akon, my bad, Trey and Crazy Bones, Trey, Tyree, Papoos, I already mentioned Weird Al, and Chingo Bling. And oh my gosh, look at the choice. It was 24th in Australia, 13th in Austria, 40th in France, 8th in Germany, 2nd in both Ireland and New Zealand in the UK single charts, and the US hot rap songs charts as well, 5th in Scotland, 25th in Sweden, 19th in Switzerland, uh, number 1 in the UK R&B charts, and the US Billboard Hot 100 charts, and the US Women charts, number 7 in the US hot R&B slash hip hop songs charts, and number 3 in both the US mainstream top 40 and the US pop 100. By the end of the year 2006, it was 67 in Germany, 10th in New Zealand, 41st in the UK single charts, 8th in the US Billboard Hot 100, and 3rd in the US Whitman charts. And with the certifications, it was gold in Germany, the US, well, there's two versions of the US, but we'll get more on that in a second. Germany, uh, it was gold in Germany, New Zealand, in the regular US. In Germany, it sold about 150,000 copies. In New Zealand, it was 5,000 copies. In the US, it was 500,000 copies with this version. It was silver in the UK, selling around 200,000 copies. Now, there is a US Master Tone uh, certification where it was four times platinum, selling around 4 million copies. And it was released, the single that is, I don't think I mentioned this, no, I did not. It was released, here's some interesting news, December 13, 2005, it was recorded in 2005. But it was also, they also state that it was released in the US in January 12, 2006, and it was released in the UK September 14, 2006. So that's interesting. Now, let's get on to the third single 
off this album. So this this is weird. So they're calling this the third U.S. single and the second international single. So that's interesting. That is grown and sexy. So oh, you know what? Did they put the no? They no, they did that right. Okay. This single was released in the U.S. June 11, 2006, and it was released in the U.K. November 20th, 2006. And I'm assuming it was recorded in 2005, 2006. It does not say. Now, also, it does not ha have a music video. I do not see anything about a music video. And it did not make the charts anywhere in the U.S., but it did make the chart in the U.K., peaking at number 35. So, there's that as well. And also, it charted in the Pizzo Countdown at number 7 in November 2006. So, that's it for the three singles. Now, let me give you guys my favorite tracks off this album from Worst to First. Peppin' Me, or Peepin' Me, rather, is the worst track off this album. The tempo is cool, the melody is straight, the bass is cool but needs more of it, the kick is just straight, the, uh, the snaps right are cool, overall the track was just cool. Then we got Picture Perfect, the tempo is cool, basically the tempo, melody, kick, and claps were all cool, there was no bass, we heard the track, and the track was just cool, but you know, it sounded basic to me. Next up is In The Trunk, the drum pattern is cool, drum pattern, I think I said drum, drum pattern is cool, the tempo is cool, same with the melody. And the kick and the snare. No bass hurt this one as well. Overall, the track is still cool. Then we got the outro. The beat pattern is cool. Same with the tempo and the melody and the bass and the kick. The snare is borderline cool, really cool. Overall, the track is still cool. Then we got the sound of revenge intro. The tempo is cool. The melody is really cool, though. No bass hurts. The 808 was straight. The kick is cool. The snare is borderline cool, really cool. Overall, the track is cool. Then we got Riding. Obviously, his biggest track today, in my opinion. The tempo is cool. The melody is, is really cool. No bass hurts. The 808s are cool. Same with the kicks. The snare clap combo, they're cool. The other snare is cool. Overall, the track is cool. Then we got Turn It Up. The tempo is borderline cool, really cool. The melody is cool. No bass, as usual. 808s are cool. The, slap, uh, the snare clap combo is really cool, though. Overall, the track is still cool. Then we got Bored In My Life. This is the most disappointing track of the entire album. And this was actually made history. Normally when I mention the drum pattern, it's because it's different, it's unique, and it's cool or above. This is the first time where I would make reference to the drum pattern to point out that it was the opposite. The void in my night, that drum pattern is bland because that was the main reason why the potential was shot. It, it was like, it messed up the potential of this track. And I was playing around this, you know, about how it had potential to begin with. The tempo is born like cool, really cool. The sample used is excellent, which is the main reason why it had a lot of potential. That sample was really, really good. It was really, really good. And the sample that I'm talking about is Do What You Do by Jermaine Jackson. That sample was dope as heck. Moving on. The bass is cool, same with the kick. The claps are cool, but should have used a the snare there. The track is cool. Like I said, the sample is really dope, but everything else wasn't. So they should have used a different uh, drum pattern. They should have used the snare instead of the clap. Probably should have used a different kick as well. And this would have been a dope track, if you ask me, based off the beat that is. Next up, Think I'm Crazy. Drum pattern is unique, but cool. Tempo is cool. Melody is borderline cool, really cool. The bass is cool. The kicks are cool, as there are two different kicks here. The claps are cool. The snare is borderline cool, really cool. All of that, despite all that, rather, the track is cool. Then we got Radio Interruption. The kick is cool. The melody doing the verse is really cool. The melody doing the hook with the vocals high, but they were just playing cool. In fact, that's what they, they probably should have took that melody out, to be honest. The bass is cool, but needs the bang. The kick is cool, but should have used a different one. The snare is really cool with the pattern. The, I like how they did the pattern with the snares. The track is cool as it had potential as well with the verse melody and the snare. So yeah, that one had potential as well. Next up is Rain. The tempo is borderline cool, really cool. The melody is cool, same with the bass. The kick is really cool. The snare is really cool. Overall, this track is borderline cool slash really cool. Now let's get on with the top five tracks off this album. The fifth best track off this album is Grown and Sexy. The tempo is cool. The melody is borderline cool, really cool. The bass is really cool. The kick is cool, but should have used a different one. The snare is really cool though. Overall, the track is borderline cool, really cool. Fourth best track off this album, Fly As The Sky. The tempo is cool, the melody is really cool, no bass hurts, the kick is cool, really cool, it's borderline there. The snare clap combo is really cool. The snare, uh, there was a different snare, is 
cool, really cool. It's born alive around that range. Overall, the track is really cool, nevertheless. Nevertheless, excuse me. The third best track off this album, Southern Takeover. The tempo is cool. The melody is really cool. No bass as usual. The 808s are borderline cool, really cool. The snare is really cool. Overall, the track is really cool. Second best track off this album, no snitching. The tempo is really cool. The melody is borderline cool, really cool. The bass is cool, but should bang more. The kick is really cool. The claps are borderline cool, really cool. Overall, the track is really cool. And the number one track off this album is Frontin'. The tempo is really cool. Same with the melody. The synth bass is cool, but needs to bang here, to be honest. The kick is borderline cool, really cool. The snare is really cool. Overall, the track is really cool. Frontin', without question, the best track off this album, followed by No Snitching, Southern Takeover, Fly at the Sky, and Grown and Sexy. So let me give you guys some professional ratings and some additional notes about the album. But there's something that I've almost forgot. So All Music gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. Hip Hop DX gave it 3 out of 5 stars. IGN gave it a 7.7 .7 out of 10. Rap Reviews gave it an 8.5 out of 10. Rolling Stone gave it a 3.5 out of 5. And USA Today gave it 3 out of 4 stars. So the album has the release of Chop and Screw version by DJ OG1C. Oh, God, excuse me. <clears throat> Chameleonaire and Crazy Bone won the best rap performance by a duo or group Grammy for the songwriting. In 2009, Chameleonaire released Mixtape Messiah 7 and explained on the final track of disc one, so I'm assuming that was a double disc, that he was also going to be considered for the best new artist Grammy, but bootleggers caused him to be disqualified by releasing unauthorized Chimena albums the same year his debut was released. So that was messed up. So what do I think about this album? I'll be honest, I think these professional ratings, they, they are a bit overrated. I'm gonna give this one a 3.25 out of five. And if you want to stream it, knock yourself out, you know, I, I like, Obviously, the writing song, that's obviously his uh, most recognizable song. But they, like, there's a lot of other songs off this album that was better than that one. And nothing, again, nothing here is legendary. There's nothing here to me that's a classic or anything like that. And, you know, this is somewhat passable. But if you want to stream it, go ahead and knock yourself out. Again, 3.25 out of 5. There you go. And I'm going to call it a wrap. So with all that said, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, New Jack Aspie, a.k.a. The New Stimulate Smith. Saying peace out, y'all, and I'll see y'all next time. Yeah.